Well, here are the problems to the answers to problem set number 12 reflection and refraction. Question 1 talks about a plane mirror and you have this person whose eyes are 1.64 meter above the floor okay that's the picture now there he is 2.30 meters away from it and the edge of the plane mirror is 38 centimeters above the floor you got to find uh, the nearest point so that means the the minimum value of X only beyond which you can see reflection Now from the figure you can see two triangles, okay that's the little triangle there in the little top one, both right angle triangles and in the top one tan theta, tan theta is opposite side by adjacent so it's going to be 1.64 minus 0.38 by 2.30. So that should be equal to 0.38 by x and that is from the, the triangle below. Now when you calculate both, set them equal to each other as we have done and calculate x, you get x to be 0.38 times 2.30 by 1.26 so you get 0.69 meters. So it's, it's just a matter of looking at the two right angle triangles and setting up equations for tan theta, theta being the same in both of those as shown. Well, in question two, you are standing 88 centimeters from a plane mirror. And uh, the question is about what is the area of the mirror that is used to reflect the rays entering one eye from a point on the tip of your nose. Okay. So assuming that the eye and the nose are on the same vertical plane, which is almost true, uh, this is the kind of figure that you get. So both the diameters there of where it hits the mirror and the pupil of the eye are shown in the figure. Now distance of the object is DO and the distance of the image is DI and both these distances are measured from the plane mirror as always. Now since the angle subtended is the same And you know that the angle is just length of the arc divided by the radius. So in this case the length of the arcs would be the diameters Okay. So when you take the ratio This, this ratio gives the angle and the next ratio also gives the same angle. So, you know, we're talking about this, this angle here and both these ratios give the same angle. So we've set them equal to each other. So from that you can make dm the subject And knowing that DO is equal to DI in magnitude, you can show that it's one half DP because this part becomes 
2 di and then the di so will get cancelled so you get one half dp now the area of a circle is pi r squared that is the area of the mirror part where it cuts the mirror and that can of course be substituted as dp squared by 4 because we've shown that dm is half dp that's a direct substitution of this here okay and when you put in the numbers You get it as 4 times 10 to the negative 6 meter squared. In question 3, it is concave. The radius of curvature is given. And you are asked to find the focal length. So, focal length is just half of the radius. So, that's 12 centimeter. And then by using the equation for mirrors, you, you're given DO as 35. You got the focal length, so you can easily find DI by making DI the subject. And that should be the other way around. I know I've corrected it, so let me show the whole thing there. That's with the correction, so 1 by F minus 1 by DO, and rearrange and you get uh, the formula for DI this way. Substitute the numbers and you will get 76 centimeter. And then to find the magnification, use the formula, M is equal to minus DI by DO, you get negative 2.17. Because the magnification is negative, we know that the image is inverted and it is real. Because magnification is negative only for a real image. In question 4, the dentist wants or rather requires the image to be magnified four times. And you know, only a concave mirror can magnify it. And therefore, for sure, this is a concave mirror. And DO is 2 centimeter. That's the distance from the tooth. Magnification is 4 times. And because it's an upright image, now that's a very important point, because it's an upright image, we know that it is a virtual image. That's why the magnification is taken as positive 4. Again, because it's given to be an upright image, we know it's a virtual image, and that's why magnification is positive. Now use the formula for magnification. Make the I the subject. Substitute the numbers given. You get once you get di, we can use it in the equation for mirrors, which is one by do plus one by di is one by f, and hence you can calculate the focal length. Be careful about the signs. Get the focal length as positive 2.67 centimeter. Uh, definitely, this shows that it's a concave mirror because only a concave mirror has a positive focal length. And you have to find the radius, so you double this.
5.3 cm. In question 5, it is stated to be a convex and a convex can only produce virtual image. That's why it's positive 0.55 and DO is 3.2. So magnification is, that's the formula, it's given to be positive uh, five, 0 0.55, so as before you can use the two numbers to find di. Once you get di and you already know do, just use it in the equation and find the focal length. negative 3.9 meter and see the focal length is negative it's a convex mirror and in question 6 the height of the object is given 4.5 centimeters DO is 26 centimeter and you have to produce a virtual image that's upright all virtual images are upright and uh, you you also have to find uh, you are also given the height of the image now since you have the height of the image and the height of the object we can find the magnification using hi by ho and it is a smaller virtual image which is produced by a convex mirror so Now use the magnification formula and equate it to negative di by do. So you get di and as before use it in the equation to find the focal length and then double it to find the radius. So double it to find the radius. Negative 181.1 centimeter. In the seventh one, uh, you're asked to find the total distance caps D. Uh, to do that, you first look at that little triangle that I have just begun shading there that triangle you find the base of that triangle and then find the base of this bigger triangle and if you add up the two bases you would get the total distance caps D and to find those first you have to find the angles using Snell's law that's for the first refraction you find theta 1 25.88. Once you get that, you can apply Snell's law again for the second surface as it goes from N1 to N2. So in a similar fashion, find theta 2. Once you've got both of that, you can take the total distance as 
call them D1 and D2, those are the two bases. And D1 would be 2 times tangent 25.88 and D2 would be 3 times because those are the, the heights, 3 times tan 28.75 which gives 2.6 centimeter. Well, the eighth question is a similar question. You will find where the spot of light hits the bottom of the pool measured from the wall beneath his foot. Okay, so uh, finish the diagram this way and uh, once again here I have made a small mistake because the angle that you have to show is the angle of incidence theta 1. So when you do that, tan theta 1 is 2.5 by 1.3. Okay. So from which you get theta 1 then apply Snell's law to find theta 2. And once you have those two angles, once you have theta 2, basically you can you can calculate the distances. Okay, so from that figure now, tan theta 2 is L by 2.1. So you get, you get L from there. And once you get that, you just have to, have to add it to 2.5 to find the total distance from his feet. Uh, which is from the edge of the pool. Four point three nine meter is what you get. And uh, question nine is about about an equilateral prism, which means the angle of the prism is sixty degrees. These angles are theta two and theta three inside, and uh, we have theta one and theta four outside. You're actually asked to find theta 4 which is the angle at which it emerges well you have to go through a process now to find that first apply Snell's law the surface find theta 2 Once you get that, you could take that triangle, and in that triangle, 90 minus theta 2. Let me explain that, because this, oh, this angle here, this one, is 90, all right, I'm talking about this angle, it's 90 minus theta 2. Okay. And similarly, on the other side, it's 90 minus theta 3 plus 8. Some of the angles of a triangle is 180. Well, you get 180 on both sides, so you come up with theta 2 plus theta 3 is A. From which you can find theta 3. Once you get theta 3, apply Snell's law at the second surface and find theta 4. So the answer is 56.2 degrees. Question number 10 is about an optical fiber. It's a perfectly symmetric reflection that continues up to the very end. So when you're asked to find X, all you got to look at is that right triangle there. And uh, 
take tan of the angle given I recognize the fact that each angle is 14.5 that's why I said it's perfectly symmetrical so tan theta is d by x just a matter of calculating x from that equation X is 5.41 times 10 to the negative 4 meter. Thank you.